Hello everybody, Taylor Brown here with String Fairy. In this episode, we're going to recreate one of my Instagram renders at string underscore fairy. And the one we'll be making today is this slide here. Okay, so let's get started. Let's delete all the objects here. A X delete, add a circle, change the number of segments to 10. Go to the top view, numpad 7, go into edit mode, tab, and then select these right here and shift D to copy them, separate by selection. Delete these from the original circle, X vertices. Unhide, and now we have this piece and this piece right here. Okay, so let's uh, let's rotate these on the x axis so that they're up, or x ninety, and then let's add a screw modifier to one of these. Screw, change the axis to y, and the screw higher like this. We're going to need to move the circles over from the origin point. So let's go into edit mode, and both of these. A, G to drag and move it on the X axis. So X until we get the slide that we want. Now let's uh, ramp up the iterations to three and then let's add a solidify, give it some thickness here then add a subdivision surface set to two. Now it's a little bit um it's a little bit uh, smoothed out on the edges here. So let's add a bevel. Move this up above the subdivision. We only want the bevel to be applied to the edges here. So let's change the limit method to angle. And move this up and change the segments to two. Make sure we don't get bevel right here. Let's ramp this up a little higher. Somewhere on there is good. And we can always change the thickness here. And the width. Now let's give this one right here the same modifiers. Click on the top circle, and then shift left click this line here, control L, make links with the modifiers. And then we can always change the thickness here, and the bevel a little bit lower, five by two. Move it up, GZ. Something like that's good. And we can always go into edit mode, both of these, move it over on the X axis, GX. Something like that's good. Let's render this out in cycles. Use the GPU. That will allow us to render out faster. And let's add a light here, light area light. Change the power to something like 2000. Scale up and scale on the y axis, SY, make it this light strip. Add a constraint, damp to track, and set the target to the object here. Use the negative z axis. Now we can move it around and get different lighting scenarios really fast. Copy it. Rotate it. Then let's add a new material to this uh, slide here. Give it a new material. Give it a blue plastic. 
call it plastic. And then give a new material to this uh, top here. Let's give it a glass by pressing G on the surface. Change the roughness here a little bit lower. And then add a background here, mesh plane. Let's rotate it on the X axis or X90. Scale it up, move it up, GZ, and then move it back, GY. Add a camera here, shift a camera, and control alt numpad zero to move the camera to the current viewport view. Change the resolution here to something like 1920 by 1920. Move it in, G and the middle mouse wheel. Move this up, GZ. And then let's add the ball inside of this slide here. Select the slide, shift A, mesh icosphere, and just position it anywhere in the slide that you want. I'll put it in the middle. Let's subdivide it, control two, and then smooth shade it, shade smooth. Let's give it a new material, give it a red plastic. Now, what if we want to add some scratches to the surface of this slide here? Well, we can go into the shader editor. And we can add it here. Let's turn on the node ring add-on. And that will allow us to view each node individually. So for instance, if we add a Volner texture, we can press Control Shift and left click to view the node. Let's change the distance metric to Minkowski. Let's add a noise texture right here. And that is creating some rings around the shape of this texture. Now let's add a texture setup. So Control T, use the object coordinate Then grab a color ramp and move the black slider in. Let's change the scale here to something like two. And then let's offset the texture using a second Volnoi. Let's change the coloring to cells. And let's just add a mixed RGB to offset this texture using these cells. So now, change the scale here to something like five. Now we get some scratches. Let's plug this into a, into a bump node. The color goes into the height here. Now we have some fake depth, but actually it's extruding from the surface here. Let's invert this and plug this into the normal here. And then lower the strength for this of these scratches. Well, let's add some contrast to the scene here. Color management, use curves, bring this in. Then we can change the intensity of these lights. Let's do 4000 and 4000. Now let's change the render settings here. Let's do 200 for the render. Change the performance to the tile size of 
256. This will perform better on the GPU. And then let's go into the view layer tab, add normal data and direct diffuse. This will um, be used for the denoising process. And now let's render this out. F12. We can hop into the compositor. Let's use the nodes and turn on the backdrop here. And then press Control Shift left click to view the node here. And V to zoom out. Now let's add a denoise node. That will fix the fireflies. Let's add the normal data here and the direct diffuse. Now let's add a glare node right here. Then add a lens distortion node. Change the dispersion to something like 0.02. This will add a slight chromatic aberration to the edges of the objects here. And we can see that better if we ramp it up to 0.1, that chromatic aberration right there. But let's keep it at 0.02 to make it more subtle. Now the glare is a little bit too strong. So let's add a, let's add a mix right here. Then plug the original denoise image right here. And slide it over so that we still have some of the glare. Now we are finished.